Alright guys, welcome to the Ishik Adventures channel. Today is part 3 of the Cairns Aquarium Reptile Section Tour. It is the last part, so my review will be after this. But we got two cool species. One of them I'm going to talk about for a little bit longer than the other one because it was so cool. Um, so that'll be after this, but let's get right into it. So here we have the Boyd's Forest Dragon, and here's a fun challenge for you while you listen to this. I know sometimes it's hard to pay attention at least for me, uh, try to see how many you can spot. I know the number that is in here, um, and I'll say it during the olive snake part. Oh, I, I gave you a spoiler, I guess, yeah. But it wasn't an olive snake, that's completely wrong. Anyways, I'll give you the number after, but see how many you can stre stretch. Jeez, I cannot talk. Um, see how many you can count uh, while I give you some Boyd's Forest Dragon information. So, those were the Boyd's Forest Dragon. Um, their scientific name is Lophosaurus boydi. Um, they are a diurnal species, and they are native to the rainforests in northern Queensland. Queensland, And they are arboreal. Now, these guys are really cool. I don't know if you've watched um, some of our other videos. I don't remember the title of it. But I found one in the wild. I don't know if I got it on camera. But when I went to catch it, what they do is they run up the trees way faster than you would think they should. And... They go around the tree as they're running up. So you can't just jump up and grab them because they're constantly moving in a circular direction up the tree. Kind of like a spiral staircase. But they go up it so fast before you can even sort of react. You have to be super, super quick um, or just super confident and go and catch them. But if you hesitate at all, they'll be gone and almost impossible to catch. They're very, very cool. Um, they are primarily insect eaters um, and like earthworms, stuff like that but they will occasionally eat fruit and plant matter, very rarely though. So, that's a cool fact, I did not know that about them. They are egg layers, and they lay about one to six eggs um, every time they breed, which is also pretty cool. Uh, the eggs take about 100 days to hatch, which is pretty long for egg incubation, in my opinion, but yeah, about 100 days to incubate, they are sexually dimorphic, so males will be larger and they will have a larger head. Only downside is it's almost impossible to tell as babies without probing them. Um, so you have to wait till they're adults to be able to tell their gender. And if you don't know what a female boy's forest dragon looks like, you kind of have to have a female and a male next to each other to determine which one is which. But they are sexually dimorphic. Um, and the last cool fact I have on these guys is that they do not bask. They rely on air temps. They don't go up and bask in the sun they rely on what the rainforest is. Now, most reptiles will bask in the sun. They purely rely on air temperature, which is pretty cool. All right, next. I'm super excited about this. I can't believe we got to see it. Uh -huh. This is an olive sea snake. So not an olive snake, not an olive python. It's an olive sea snake. And this video is one of my favorites by far. Um, just watching how elegantly it swims was awesome. Um, and I have never seen a sea snake anywhere, ever. I've always wanted to, never seen one. Can't wait till I see one in the wild. It has to happen before I die. Um, so it was amazing walking around the corner and I immediately knew it was a sea snake and I'm gonna talk about them because they're freaking awesome. Um, the scientific name is Aphysurus levis. Um, they are an elapid snake and they are highly venomous. Uh, Sea snakes have to be highly venomous because they hunt fish in the ocean. So their venom has to be super potent or else they'll bite the fish. The fish will freak out and fish can swim super fast. And so by the time the venom takes effect, if it's not as potent, that fish will be too far gone to even chase. Another animal will be in it and the snake will never get to eat. So it has such potent venom uh, so it can immediately kill this fish. Now, a lot of people think a banded sea crate is the most venomous snake in the world, and that's a, again, a sea snake. It's actually the inland taipan. Um, it's being debated right now. It's the inland taipan. But yeah, if something's that high up on the list, it's extremely deadly. This is not the banded sea crate. Um, this is an olive sea snake, but it's still extremely highly venomous, and there have been recorded fatalities from it. Uh, another thing that's kind of weird is they will approach scuba divers. Um, now, you don't need to be scared at all. They are a nocturnal animal. They come out during the day purely to breathe. So they don't have gills or anything. They spend their lives in the ocean. They even breed 
in the ocean. They rare, if you see an olive sea snake on land, it is because it is injured. And I'll talk about the land stuff a little bit later. But, what was I saying? During the day, they hide. They only come out to grab a breath of air. And they can hold their breath for up to two hours. And they can dive down to 230 feet or 70 meters. Although they kind of stay around 35 meters. Um, I don't know the feet to that. I don't want to do that math right now. But, yeah, they'll come up for air during the day. At night, they go out and hunt. Um, one cool thing about sea snakes is they do have scales all around their belly, but I'm sure you can see in this video, they're super slender. They actually don't have belly scales like land snakes. Um, they have scales, I guess, on the underside of them, but they're not the belly scales that allow a snake to move. So when they're on land, they do not move well. They don't even really move at all. So if you find a sea snake on land, any species, um, it's stuck there, it is stranded, it's gonna wait for the tide to come in and take it out, and it is probably injured. That is the only reason most sea snakes will come to shore. Some will come to shore to breed and lay eggs, um, but not the olive sea snake. It breeds in the water, and it actually gives birth to live young, and usually six to eight young, which is also pretty cool. Um, let's see, what else have I forgotten? Yeah, it'll approach scuba divers. Um, when you're scuba diving occasionally. It's super rare to see sea snakes. You don't need to be scared of them. They approach scuba divers in an inquisitive way, not an aggressive way. So if you're ever scuba diving, you see an olive sea snake or any sea snake, bask in the beauty of that situation as long as you can, but don't make any super sudden movements. Don't try to scare the snake. Don't go extremely close to the snake. The snake if a sea snake bites you, it is purely defensive. Um, all it is, it's curious. If it's approaching you, it's curious. Just remain calm, stay still, and appreciate the sight you're seeing because it is very, very rare. Um, all of sea snakes grow to six feet or two meters long. So it's a pretty decently sized snake, bigger than most people. Um, trying to see if there's anything I missed. I do have notes here. I don't think I have. I just think sea snakes are awesome and I cannot wait till the day I see one in the wild. Now we're going to our, my review. So this is the first aquarium, like reptile section on the channel. So I don't have a ton to base this on. And of course, while I was there, I couldn't remember any of the other reptile displays. So this is number one. And I'm gonna rate it a score of seven out of 10. Um, wanted to go six, but I feel like that's just a little bit too low for that sea snake. So it's seven. The reason I gave it a seven is variety of animals. They had a ton of them. Um, but nothing super, super crazy besides the sea snake, in my opinion. They had some emerald monitor, they had some cool monitors, um, but not a ton of venomous snakes. Uh, and I kind of like in the reptile section, I want to see all the non-venomous stuff and I want to see the really venomous stuff, stuff as well. So that's just a nitpicky part. One thing I did notice is their glass was a little foggy and hard to see through. I don't know if you could tell from some of these videos. Um, so I knocked it down a little bit. They're just for enclosure cleanliness. The enclosures were fine. Um, I just would prefer if they were a little cleaner for a reptile section. Um, again, that's just nitpicking. And then the last thing I would say is I do think the all of sea snakes enclosure was a little too small. Not even a little too small. I think it was way too small. Um, I think that thing should be in a way bigger enclosure. Uh, but other than that, I did love their reptile section. I'm not gonna say anything else bad about it. I think you should go check it out. There are some incredible reptiles there. Incredible reptiles. They have some nice enclosures. Um, you'll still be able to see some cool stuff. And you're in an aquarium, so you'll be able to see some amazing fish. Some of these fish tanks were incredible. They have this huge wall fish tank. You'll have to check out uh, Peyton's video of these aquarium tours um, of like the fish side, but they were incredible. The reptile section did not disappoint. And since it is the first one, I am giving it a seven out of 10. Don't wanna to go too high, don't wanna to go too low. I'll have to go back in a, I don't know, a year sometime and compare it again. Maybe give it a higher score, see if it got any new animals. Um, but I also did not show every single enclosure and every single animal. I showed a decent amount, but you will wanna go check out the reptile section, the Cairns Aquarium, it is worth it. Um, I'm actually going back to the States in June and July planning on checking out some zoos and aquariums, and I will definitely be reviewing those, getting a ton of footage, and so we'll have something kind of to base our um, 
measurements on, like a ranking system on. But as of now, this is a 7 out of 10. Still successful in my book. 70% um, or higher, I think, is a good score. Wasn't awful. Was not the 100% best reptile display I saw, have seen. But again, we'll compare it to other things because I don't remember the Denver Aquarium, the Denver Zoo, the color. I do remember the Colorado Springs um, reptile section a little bit. Can't wait to rank that one. Um, and then I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Maybe I'll go to a gator park. I don't know for sure. But thank you guys for watching. If you watched all three parts, great. Go check out the Cairns Aquarium if you're in Cairns. It is worth it. Um, I'll see you in the next video.